Hello everybody, welcome to Experience Jesus with AVJ, Apostle Victor James. I want to thank God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ for giving us the opportunity today, right now, this moment, for us to break the bread of life together. And I want to thank God for you, my audience, my, my viewers, you know, for the opportunity God has given to you you and I to be, you know, a member of God's family. It's awesome. It's, it's a blessing. It's a blessing that nothing can replace. Praise God. And um, the Bible said in 1 John in chapter 1, it said our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. In Jesus speaking in John chapter 4, he said God is spirit and he seeks for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Paul speaking in Philippians chapter 3, in verse 3, Paul said by the Holy Ghost, he said, we are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit and put no confidence at all in the flesh. So which means the father's desire to have spirit, spirit worshipers, you know, we are the fulfillment of it in the name of Jesus. Now quickly, before we hit the ground running in today's fellowship, uh, I want to ask you, um, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, to please go to my YouTube channel. It's Apostle Victor James, YouTube. And uh, just press the subscription button. We have loads of teachings there, you know, messages, and they are free. Uh, you know, it will be a blessing to you, your family, your friends, and somebody. And you can introduce it also to other people. Apostle Victor James on YouTube. Please do that. And then secondly, I'm going to ask you to share this teaching, you know, share this message, because I believe that um, the Lord put something in my heart for everybody, you know, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All right, welcome again to Experience Jesus with AVJ, Apostle Victor James. I'm excited, glory be to God, hallelujah. <laughs> you know, I like that, I like that. <laughs> Praise God. All right, our first scripture that we're going to start with as we hit the ground running, because we're going to break the bread. And remember that our bread that we break is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm just excited. I love Jesus with all my heart. You know, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. You know, uh, I love Jesus because he loves me too much. He loves you too much. I mean, Jesus gave up everything for you and I. All right. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians, we're going to look at ESV translation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 15 as our text scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse number 15. Glory be to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse number 15. ESV translation. The Bible said, and he, the word he there is Jesus. He said, and Jesus died for all. Ah, sweet savior. Every other person that came as a religious leader, you know, came to describe or to tell people, you know, uh, uh, what they think about God and what people should do, you know, to merit God or to, to be loved by God. But Jesus didn't come to just do that. He came as a life giver. He gave his life. The Bible said he died for all. He died for everybody. Please. Let me beg you in the name of Jesus. If you are not born again, it's a risk. It's a, it's a terrible risk to be alive and not be born again. Now, what does it mean to be born again? To be born again means to admit. I'm trying to put it in simple terms. To admit, to acknowledge the fact that Jesus died for you. You know? And not just that, he died for your sins so that you don't have to face the punishment of sin with God. And then after he died, he rose from the dead. Jesus is alive. God wants you to believe that. You know, if you can believe that and say it with your mouth, you become born again. You become saved. You become eternally saved and secured with God. So let me ask you to do that. Just say with me, Father, in Jesus' name, I confess with my mouth that Jesus died for me. I believe with my heart that Jesus is alive. For my sake, God raised him from the dead. 
Therefore, Father, I thank you for Jesus who has died for my sins and you have raised from the dead for my justification. Amen. Now, if you have said those words and you meant them with your heart, I'm telling you, you are born of God. Welcome to the family of God. The Bible said, now that he has died for us, you know, that we are, you know, Jesus has died for us. He said that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sakes died and was raised. So the Bible said from now on, God does not expect us to live for ourselves. Jesus died, you know, not because he wanted to die. Of course, it was his will, you know, but because the father, that was the father's demand, the father's will. The father wanted somebody to die for everybody because no man could die for man. You know why? Everyone was born a sinner because of what Adam did. So it's not the sin of mankind is not what man did or what everybody else did. No, it is what Adam, the, the sin of Adam. Adam's sin, Adam's disobedience to God is what is transferred to every other man that is born into this world. So Jesus came and died the death, paid the price, the consequences of sin that was Adam's sin that became a sin and dominion, you know, over mankind. Jesus lived to die for it. And the Bible said he did that according to the will of God. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 4. Look at Galatians 1, 4, please. Everybody. Look at it. Let me show it to you. Galatians chapter 1, verse 4. Please put it up. Galatians 1, verse 4. The Bible said Jesus gave himself. Oh, glory be to God. For our sins. Are you seeing that? So the issue of sin has been satisfied. By Jesus. The sacrifice of Jesus' body on the cross is what God used to pay the penalty for sin. That's why nobody is going to go to hell for sin. Because Jesus has died for sin. Sin has been taken care of. Now the Bible said that he might deliver us from this uh, 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 present evil world according to the will of God the Father. So the will of the Father was that Jesus being God come into the world, must be to die for the world. To die for the sins of the world. Because the wages of sin is not confession or repentance. No. The wages of sin is death. There's no way to say if you sin, you have to go and repent. Then, excuse me. That's the wage. That's the price for sin. No. The price for sin is death. So Jesus has died and used his physical body to pay the price for sin. That's why now we can confess Jesus as Lord and Savior and all our sins are forgiven us. You see, so Jesus' death was crucial. Ah, I rose a gaba, dayagad. As a matter of fact, because it is the will of God that Jesus should die for everybody, for the sins of the world, God tied all of the blessings that man will ever require both in this life and in the one after to Jesus who died for everybody. The Bible said in Revelation chapter 5, let me show you that in verse 11 and 12. Revelation chapter 5 verse 11 and 12. Look at the benefit of Jesus. He died and then after he had died, paid the price for sin for on our behalf, not for himself, for our sake. Jesus was raised from the dead by God. And being raised from the dead, God now made Jesus the custodian of blessings. Woo! The Bible said in Revelation chapter 5 verse 11, look at this. He said, and I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Look at verse 12. Put verse 12, please. Verse 12 says, Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain 
You see, he was slain. But now that he has been slain, he has paid the price. The death penalty price for sin. He has paid it. Look at what the Bible says. In raising him from the dead, he was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. Glory be to God. Jesus has become the custodian of all these things for man. So if you want to enter the dimension of God in the area of power, Jesus is the entrance to it. Jesus is the way to go. If it is for uh, 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 riches, Jesus is the way to go. I mean, pure riches. Jesus is the way to go. If it's for wisdom, Jesus is the way to go. If it's for strength, Jesus is the way to go. If it's for honor, Jesus is the way to go. If it's for glory, Jesus is the way to go. If it's for blessing, Jesus is the way to go. Can you see the will of God? That he should die for us so as to obtain this thing, to collect this thing. And then Jesus has become the guarantee for all of this. Woo! Had Jesus not died, think of it. Had Jesus not paid the price for sin, offered himself, none of us could ever be guaranteed power, riches, strength, honor, or wisdom, or, or, or glory, or blessing. None of us. So that Jesus paid the price for sin on our behalf. Now he has collected these things as a guarantee for every one of us who will believe in him. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. I need you to say that yourself. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. He died for our sins and took delivery of the things we will ever need on our behalf. Ah, sweet Jesus. Oh, so the Bible says, watch this. Watch this, watch this. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, um, in ESV translation, in Galatians 2, 20, the Bible said, I have been crucified with Christ. Now that I've come to Christ, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, and I've accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. The Bible said, I have been crucified with Christ. Look at it. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. I'm dead. The day I, accept, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, that death on the cross, I was crucified with Jesus. He said, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh. Are you seeing it? The life I live in, this is my body now. He said, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Are you seeing that? You are now now. The life we are living now. The, now that we are born again, we are born of God. We, are, you know, we have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. The life we live now is not supposed to be, it's not our life. We are supposed to live for him. So the Bible said, if we have to go back to our original text, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15, please daddy, go back there. Go, go back to that. Go back there. You know, go back there. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. Watch this. He said, and he died for all that those who live might, might uh, uh, those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for their sake and rose. So now, God does not, the will of the, of the Father, remember, before I even talked about that, the will of the Father for Jesus was that Jesus should Pay the price for sin on our behalf, for our sake. And, and that once the price is paid, Jesus should take delivery of everything that we will ever need as a guarantee. So Jesus died, and then when he resurrected, he received power, riches, wisdom, strength. Are you getting this thing? Uh, honor, glory, and blessing. Jesus received them on our behalf. He doesn't need them. He received them for our sake. 
so that we can enjoy it. Every one of us that accept him as Lord and Savior can enjoy it. That's the will of the Father. So now that Jesus has paid the price for us, the Bible now says the Father's will is that you and I should live our lives for Jesus. We should become Jesus' eyes, his hands, his voice, his feet. So anytime Jesus wants to walk, you know, walk, W-A-L-K. Anytime Jesus wants to walk to somewhere, he uses my feet. He uses your feet. Anytime Jesus wants to touch somebody, he uses my hand. He uses your hand. Are you seeing it? God wants us to live the life we now live in this body. According to Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 we read. He said we live it is no longer you and I who is alive anymore. No, we, we died. The person that is alive now in us is Jesus. So Jesus is using our own body. Are you getting it now? To to do whatever he wants to do on earth. He, want, he wants to use our body to do whatever he wants to do. Because he died, he lived to die for us. So now God's will is that we, we should live to let him express himself through us. Don't live for yourself. You, you are dead. Don't live. The Bible said in Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. I, I think I'm right. Put, put it up, please. Colossians 3, 3. You know, put it in that King James. I think I like it now. You know, Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. Watch this. Look at what the Bible says. He said, For you are dead. You that is dead cannot be alive again. You can't be alive. You see, that's what Paul said by the Spirit of God in that Galatians we read. He said, Nevertheless, I live. It's no longer I that is living. I, I am not the one alive anymore. It's Jesus that is alive in me. That's the life I have now is the life of Jesus that is in me. Are you getting it? The Bible says you are dead and your life is here together with Christ in God. So, a dead person can't move about. A dead being can't do nothing. He's dead. He has entered a state of uh, uh, motionlessness. You see, but we are still alive. We are still moving. He said the life we have now in this body, it belongs to Jesus. It's Jesus' life. Are you getting him? That's, what, that's God's plan. God wants Jesus to be able to live that life that he gave up. He will still live it and fulfill it on earth. Woo! I pray in the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, open your understanding to this truth. Jesus <clears throat> is still supposed to live that his life that he sacrificed for us. He should still live it on earth. It's God, the Father still wants him to live that his life. So now, Jesus in us, is inside of us, expressing himself through us. That's why, <clears throat> anytime, like I said, Jesus wants to touch somebody, he uses my hand. He uses your hand. Are you getting it? He, anytime Jesus wants to look at something, he uses my eyes. He looks to, uh, at anything through my eyes. He looks through, through your eyes, you know. He hears through your ears. He speaks through your mouth. Am I making sense? You know? So, have you, have you ever noticed that Jesus said, when it comes to anybody that is sick, you know, uh, the Bible said we should lay hands on the sick, you know, and they shall recover. He didn't say we should lay hands on the sick and pray, and then they will recover. No. Once we just touch a sick person, that sick person, Power, virtue will go into that sick person. But he said on one condition, in my name. You see, we'll, we'll, if somebody is sick, we'll just say, in Jesus' name. You don't even need to say, oh, you sickness. Oh, you powers of sickness. I command you to come out of this body. Come out. Come out. No, no, you don't need to do that. You know, it's because people are not trained in the word of God. That's why they do that. And then they, they add a lot of emotions to it. Because they feel that that emotion they are adding to it is what is going to put healing power in that person's body. No, you have forgotten. We are his body. It is where Jesus is putting on you and I. It's in us. So he is demonstrating whatever he wants to do through us. When we lay hands on somebody, automatically they become healed. Because in Jesus' name, it's Jesus that is touching that person through my hand, through your hand. The Bible said in Mark chapter 16, look at it, it's there in verse 17. Mark 16, verse 17, uh, and then we jump to verse 18. 
you know, Mark chapter, let me just show you that. Watch this. He said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. So anybody who is a believer now in Jesus, this is Jesus talking. He said, these are the signs that will follow believers. You know, these are the kind of things you will see happening to born again or through born again Christians. That's what Jesus is talking. Anybody who has accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, Jesus said, these are the kind of things that will be happening that you will see, you know, demonstrating through that person. The person that is born again. All right. He said, in my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with tongues. Go on. Verse, eight, uh, verse 18. Quickly, daddy. He said, they shall pick up serpent, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt uh, uh, them. He said, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. He, have you seen the thing there? Any sick person they touch, that person will recover. Jesus didn't say they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall begin to pray for the sick. No. You see, it's, it's our idea. It's our idea that we read, you know, a lot of our senior ministers read the idea into that scripture. Jesus didn't say when you lay hands on the sick, you, you start praying. The only condition to laying hands is in Jesus' name. You see, because once my hand touches you, it's Jesus that is touching you. Are you getting it now? So, Jesus is using our body. That's why you can't take your body anywhere you want. Ah, it is an affront against Jesus. It's an insult to Jesus. You can't carry your body to a clubhouse, you know, because once you do that, you are taking Jesus to the club. You can't do prostitution with your body. When you do prostitution with your body, you are prostituting Jesus. Are you getting it? So once you understand it, then you understand what it means to live right. Because you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You, you know, there are some things you don't look at. Because Jesus uses your eyes. He looks through your eyes. He's not, you know, you don't, you don't join them. How can you, a born again Christian, a carrier of Jesus Christ, he, you know, your body is an instrument of Jesus. Are you getting it? Your body, the totality of your body is an instrument of Jesus. Holy body. Your body has become holy. Very Holy. Oh, glory be to God. That, look, that's why when, 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 you know, a lot of ministers that don't understand, they do teach that, don't lay, because Paul said, don't lay hands suddenly, suddenly on anybody. You know, they think that uh, uh, if you are a sinner and I lay hands on you, you know, then I will share in your sin. No, that's wrong. Paul was talking about ordination in that part to Timothy. You see, when we lay hands on somebody, you know, I don't care whether you are a sinner I don't care whether the person is uh, an occultic, whether the person is occult, or the person is putting on charm, juju, as they say in Nigeria, or whatever. As soon as I lay hands on you, in Jesus' name, that charm, the demon spirit with that person, comes to a halt. They are seized. They are arrested. They are bound in the name of Jesus. You know why? Because I know what I am doing by touching you. You see, it is Jesus that is touching the person. He's just using my hands. You see, once you understand that, it will build your faith. You are never supposed to be afraid. They said there is uh, juju or charm on a seat or on a bed, and you are afraid. It's because you don't know what, you don't know who you are. You don't know what you carry. Your body has not been surrendered to Jesus as an instrument for Him to use. Once you understand that, then you will understand that even if they put any charm on any seat, as you sit in Jesus' name, guess who is sitting down? It's Jesus Christ. Woo, glory be to God. So when I hear Christians, believers, start praying, Oh God, in the name of Jesus, every power of darkness, everything that is doing this, every satanic demon, go, leave me alone. They don't understand. It's because they don't understand. And the Bible said because they refuse to understand. He said the foundation of the earth they have, is, is out of course. You know, every part of their lives is falling apart. You know, nothing is working because they refuse to understand. And when you bring knowledge like this, they don't want to accept it. Look, I remember when I got born again newly. That's many years ago. Many years ago when I got born again. You know, I was just a baby Christian. You know, I remember one afternoon I was at home, you know, all alone in the city, in the living room. Um, and then on the sofa in the sitting room, Suddenly, I just fell asleep. You know, I fell asleep. Then, a few minutes later, I discovered that there's a presence 
Something was, something came and started pressing me, choking me. So, from my sleep, I was struggling. You know, I was struggling, struggling. You know, and I was, my struggle was that I wanted to utter something. And what I wanted to utter was the name of Jesus. You know, but the thing was pressing me. So, I tried. So, at, as at the point that I was able to Monster the strength to call J. I've not even finished calling Jesus. Just that J. There was a force that came into that sitting room and zapped that being off me. And like a, you know, like a sucker, he sucked it whoop, and sucked it out. And I never experienced that until today. That was when I be, discovered truly. My body is the temple of Jesus Christ. Is the, is, is the instrument Jesus needs. He uses my mouth. He uses my hand. Just as I said in the name of J. You see, just at the beginning of his name, his person, the power of his person was demonstrated. Glory be to God. Look, I lay hands on you. In the name of Jesus Against that sickness. Against the lies of the devil. Well, I don't care whatever the doctor says. Look, there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. I need you to believe it right now. As I stretch my hand towards you. There is no distance. This is a spiritual matter. Jesus is stretching his hand towards you. Right now. Against eye problems. Headaches. Vein problem. Any part of your arteries that is blocked. I speak to your heart condition. I speak to your blood. I speak in the name of Jesus. To every, your bones, your marrows. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Against that tumor. In the name of Jesus. Against that fibroid. In the name of Jesus. Against that sickness, that disease. In the name of Jesus. I speak in Jesus' name. I lay hands on you. Against that complications in your body. In the name of Jesus. Aya, agaragad, agasataka, yagratoka. Endrado saturiaba. I'm telling you, Jesus is ministering to somebody right now. In the name of Jesus. In that family, every devil that has been troubling that family, I lay hands. In the name of Jesus. In that family. In the name of Jesus. In that business. In the name of Jesus. In that uh, 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 desire. In the name of Jesus. Concerning your education. In the name of Jesus. Concerning your children, in the name of Jesus. Ara dagesa to yada gasu sasa bada yare gaduka. Ezu agradesa kungre de kasota bayadetia. E gagraba sata. Look, I lay hands on your womb, in the name of Jesus. I lay hands on that man of God. Man of God, I lay hands on you. I, I break the spell of the devil over you. Whatever you are struggling with, I lay hands. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name. Woo! Oh, my. Araba Sataka. Believe me, I didn't plan these things. These are the, this, you know, this is the quickening of the Spirit of God and unction of the Holy Ghost. Look, the Bible said that the shadow of Peter healed people. You, you know why it happened? Because Jesus was using Peter's shadow. He borrowed his shadow. Because Peter's body is no longer his body. It's the body that Jesus borrowed to use. That's what God said. God wants Jesus to live that is life he, he gave to us. He, he uh, quote and unquote, that he donated. Jesus gave his life, his body, his flesh, you know, for our sake. So that now that we are alive now, eh, we should now allow him to use our body to live through us so our lives is no more ours it's his it belongs to jesus look once you understand this you will you will understand what, what are you doing with cocaine what are you doing with drugs you a born again christian what are you doing with drugs what are you doing with cigarette why are you smoking what are you doing with alcohol what are you doing with beer because every time you take a glass of beer, you, you are, you are, ooh, can't, don't you understand? He's going on Jesus. 
Because it's not going to leave you. Your body is his own. That's where he lives. When you understand, when you understand, you will know that the reason the Bible says you should be separate. You know, step aside from every other thing in the world. You know, your, your mind, he wants to think through you. He, he, he want, Jesus wants to think through you. That's why you see that sometimes when we hear that people are having problems, you know, or things are not right, or there's complications somewhere, you know, we can just come up with an idea that will become solution. It's, it's Jesus thinking through our thoughts or our mind. You know, he's using our mind to think, to think up ideas that can help, that can be of a blessing. Are you getting it? Jesus wants you to, to be his his kindness, the demonstration of his kindness. You know, a, a, a lot of people think that all they are born again to do is to pray. Of course, it's good to pray. I, I've been praying. I mean, I just came out of prayer before I came to do this recording. You know, I've been praying for you. I'm praying for myself. I'm praying for you. I was praying that the Lord would give me utterance, utterance and then I was praying that the Lord would give you understanding, you my hearer, you know. So you see, I've been, I, I mean, I've been praying. I haven't slept for about how many hours? The hours doesn't matter, you know. But I'm just trying to, you know, let you know that there's nothing wrong with praying. But prayer is not what Christianity is all about, you know. That is just one of the least of it. You know, the real thing is that Jesus become glorified through you. That is Christianity. That you should live for him, you know. Be a peace maker on his behalf uh, um, let him uh, demonstrate peace towards somebody let him show love to somebody you, you know don't keep fighting you know there are some believers that just think that they are christian to be fighting because they have they still have that mentality of their old life as an unbeliever you know, every time is war. Father, in the name of Jesus, everybody that is trying to destroy me, everybody that is trying to put me down, everybody that is saying my destiny should not progress. Oh God, I destroy, I destroy, I bring them down, I bring them down, I command them to fall down and die. What are you doing? What are you doing? You, you, you are praying a hopeless prayer. That's, that's what I call it, you know. I don't mean that as an insult. It is hopeless in the sense that you are praying like somebody that is without Jesus. You know? You have Jesus inside of you. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The enemy should not be your priority. Your priority should be Jesus you living his life through you. Ah! The day you come to this understanding, Arano Sokabada, you will know that you know, dying like a chicken is not your inheritance. No. Jesus is living in this body of mine. I, I, don't, I can't remember me getting into a car and we're going to travel. And I'm praying, oh God, let me get to my destination. Oh God. You mean Jesus will not get to his destination? Ah, yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's a, a lower life. You know, to be praying, although, Father, don't let the enemy keep me on the road. That's a lower life. That's a lower way of living. When you understand, Jesus lives inside of you and is using your body. The Bible said in Romans chapter 6, to anyone, you yield your members, your body, as an instrument. You yield your body as an instrument. I've decided to yield my body as an instrument to Jesus. Stop fighting people. You know, Jesus is not ready to fight anybody. He wants everybody to come to him. So he wants to use you to let them know that he's asking them to come to him. Why should you be... Uh, look, well, why are you in, in warfare? Who called you to warfare? Who called you to warfare? Who? I don't understand. Alright. Let, let's move on. Let me show you some more. I have to show you some more. In Matthew chapter 16, the Bible said in verse 26, because... Our lives now should be lived for Jesus. You and I are supposed to live our lives for Jesus. In your marriage, let it be seen. Let your spouse see Jesus through you. You know, let your husband see Jesus through you. Let your wife see Jesus through you. How can you, a born-again Christian, you know, you always nag your husband. So some women, some Christian women, when their husband closed from work, the man's heart will be panting, beating. 
because he's afraid of going home. He, and then ask the woman, hey, he say five years ago, if you know what he did, if you know what this man did, what is wrong with you? Uh, my, 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 husband, uh, my husband committed adultery. And so what? Look, do you know Jesus' disposition to your husband is forgiveness and love? Why don't you let Jesus express that through you to your husband? Why? Why? Why are you holding something that you should let go in for, in, for Christ's sake towards your husband? The, as a matter of fact, the Bible said you should forgive one another for Christ's sake, not for the sake of your husband. No, because that is what Jesus wants to do to him. He wants to love him. He, you know, he, but he can't see Jesus physically. So, but Jesus is in you, so he wants to demonstrate he loves him through you. Why don't you reach out to him? Reach out to your wife. Reach out to your husband. Why don't you break that barrier? Be Jesus to him. Be Jesus to your community. Be Jesus to your environment. Let, let Jesus be seen. He wants to be seen. You see, but he's invisible. Are you getting it? Jesus wants to be seen, yet he's invisible. So, because he lives inside of me, he wants me to express myself. Look, there was a time... Myself and my son had misunderstanding, you know. There was something, you know. But eventually I discovered that I was the one that was wrong, you know. Uh, so I called him. I told him I'm sorry. <laughs> John, he, he's smiling, he's here. He's, but I told him, I said, okay, I'm sorry. At least I'm still your father. That I told you I'm sorry does not mean you are now my father. I'm still your father, you know. But I'm sorry, you know. A, a lot of men can't tell their sons they are sorry. I don't understand. Can't you allow Jesus to encourage that boy through you? Hey, say this boy, if you know what he did, ah, this boy has committed so much crime. And so what? You know, some fathers, a man is a man of God. You know, a man of God. His son made mistake. He's now holding the bitterness He's holding the thing as a grudge against his son. And this is a pastor. Ah! The Bible said to him that you yield your body, your members, your body, as an instrument to obey. You have become his servant. Don't let the devil express himself through you. That's why anger rests in the bosom of a fool. Don't let the devil express himself through you. Allow Jesus that is in you to express himself. Let him... How long will you keep holding what your son has done wrong against you? How long will you keep holding what your daughter has done wrong against you? How long? How long? How, how, how dwelleth Jesus inside you? Why don't you allow Jesus to express himself through you? Why are you muzzling Jesus? Why are you, you know, more or less killing Jesus again inside of you? You are suffocating him. The Bible said do not grieve the spirit of God. Don't suffocate Jesus inside you. He wants to express himself. Jesus wants to talk through you. Let him talk for goodness sake. And whatever Jesus is going to say is going to be love. Woo! He's going to be love. Oh, Jesus will speak love. He will speak encouragement. Let him speak peace through you. Please allow Jesus. The Holy Ghost is using me to call out to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to yield yourself. I break the power of the devil that is trying to hold you, trying to use you against Jesus inside of you from expressing himself through you. Please, the Lord is be begging you through me. Allow Jesus to flow through you, to live through you. The life you now live in the flesh is no longer your own. It's not yours. It is Jesus who died for you, that is living in you right now. So you are living by faith of Jesus. Are you getting it? So allow him to express himself. Please, allow Jesus to express himself through you. There are too many people who are so religious. They go to church Sunday morning. As a matter of fact, they wake up 5 a.m. to do morning devotion. You know, the morning devotion is out of uh, quarrel. 
fight. You know, one person is praying, the other person is sleeping. Because the person is tired. And then you get angry. You are offended. That is not Jesus Christ. In weakness, Jesus is Jesus' strength for the other person is made uh, uh, strong in weakness. His grace is made sufficient in weakness. Oh God, oh God. You know, one of the reasons I do not encourage early morning devotion is because I have come to discover from experience the devil many a time rules and reigns in early morning devotion. Go and check most early morning devotion. You know, the other person is tired. He has not had enough sleep. That person is sleepy. And then you want them to pray. Especially parents who force their children. Or wives that want the husband to pray by all means. Or the husband that wants the wife to pray by all means. And then as the, the, the other person is dozing off, he gets angry. He stops the prayer. He says, something is wrong with you. Nonsense. You must be very stupid. Every time we are praying, you, you'll be sleeping. You, you look, at, look at the devil. Look at the devil. And they are supposed to have fellowship with the father and with the son. No, that can't be Jesus. That can't be Jesus. If the person is sleeping, leave them, let them sleep. You pray. Then later, let them pray theirs. Or you endure until they are able to, you know, with enough strength to pray. Or you encourage them. Or you touch the person. Let Jesus touch somebody through you. You know, a gentle touch. Look, uh, uh, Peter, Jesus told Peter, come. As Peter was walking on the sea towards Jesus, the Bible said because of the challenges of the world, so to speak, the boisterous wind, Peter turned and began to look somewhere else. And then he began to sing. Immediately he started singing, he shouted to Jesus, Lord, save me. Jesus did not look at him and say, idiot, were you not supposed to put your faith in me? Didn't I ask you to come? Why were you looking at the boisterous wind? No, Jesus, that is not Jesus. Precious Jesus. Loving Jesus, he rushed towards Peter, grabbed him, and pulled him up. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That is Jesus. And do you know the Bible didn't say Jesus carried Peter into the boat? That means he still allowed Peter to walk in that same grace. He still walked on water back to the boat. Wow. Let Jesus touch some, somebody through you. A leper came because in Israel those days, once a man has leprosy, he can't come back into town. A leper came from his hiding place. He saw Jesus passing. He said, Lord, if it's your will, please cleanse me of this leprosy. While he was still talking, Jesus touched him. He didn't say, look at you, a leprous. A lepro with all this, your leprosy. Eh? You are not supposed to come here. No, Jesus touched him. They brought a woman caught in adultery. They said, Lord, we caught her in the very act. As a matter of fact, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. We, the man was on top of her when we caught them. Jesus looked at them. He said, any one of you without sin, throw, cast the first stone. That's Jesus. Let Jesus live through you. Wives, submit to your husband. He said, ask unto the Lord. That means, do it as if Jesus is the one submitting to your husband. Are you getting it? Husband, love your wife. I don't care whether she's, she's qualified for it or not. Just love them. Love her. Let Jesus love through you. When Jesus comes back, to the degree you have allowed yourself, I mean you have allowed him to live through you, is to the degree of reward you will get from him. You will be amazed. You will be amazed. A lot of people can pray. Especially these people that think that they are prayer warriors. They can pray, but one of the things I have noticed about them is that they don't work in love. They don't work in love. So, don't allow this world to get your attention to the point that you become so discouraged that Jesus cannot express himself through you. Don't do that. Don't do that. Be his hand. Be his feet. You know, let Jesus become a father to a fatherless through you. Let Jesus become a mother to the motherless through you. Let, you know, a lot of people, any, people other people's children living with them, you know, their house help, their house boys or something like that, you know, they turn them into rags. Look at the clothes those children are wearing. 
Look at the way they beat them and maltreat them. And then you tell me you are a Christian, you go to church, and that you are born again, Jesus lives in you. The Bible said, don't, don't boast about these things. Because this, are, this wisdom is not from God. It's not from above. He said it's demonic to do that. It's demonic. Jesus wants your body to be an instrument with which giving is expressed. Giving is expressed. Amana Yagazada. I made a decision many years ago. Anybody who steps into my house lives like every one of us under my roof. Nobody is made to live lower than the other person. And that is because I expect that Jesus is ministering to all of us equally. Even if you have a driver, don't maltreat your driver. Don't treat your driver like a nobody. Especially if he's born again. Even if he's not born again. Let Jesus express himself through you to your driver. To touch him. To accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Not that you preach to him. You keep preaching to your driver. You. You, you need to accept Jesus as Lord. Otherwise you are going to hell. Oh. You are going to hell if you don't accept Jesus Christ. And then you maltreat him. The driver cannot see Jesus through you. Ah! You are running a risk. I'm telling you. See, I'm telling you. Because when you meet with Jesus, you will give account of it. You will give account. You want to pray in the night. Your husband is tired. Eh? You begin to shout, Oh God, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. The man say, Lower your voice. Let me sleep. Eh? This man, every devil that is trying to use you to stop me from making this prayer. Every time I'm praying, you'll be angry. I bind that devil. I command that devil. The Bible says God has called us to peace, not war. How do I let the love of God in you? How? Let Jesus live through you. You know? Let him touch somebody through you. Let him express kindness, love, Patience through you. Let him show understanding through you. He said, as though God is in, is in us, reconciling the world to himself, appealing. God is using us to appeal. To appeal. Somebody is owing you. And now because you have discovered, the person is not able to pay. As at the time, you have asked the person to pay. You are doing everything to humiliate that person. Remember, you yourself, you are owing Jesus. You are indebted to Jesus. And can you pay what you are owing Jesus in full? You can. Be patient with the one that is owing you. Be patient. The, Jesus gave a parable in the book of Matthew. He said there is a servant that... Uh, <clears throat> Borrowed money from his master. And then he was supposed to pay at a particular time. You know. He said, but when the time came, the servant could not raise the money to pay back. So the servant went to the master crying, oh, my master, please forgive me. I am so sorry. I'm not able to raise this money. Please forgive me. The Jesus said the master looked at the servant and had compassion on him. And forgave him his debt. It's okay, look. Because the way things are going, I'm not sure you're going to be able to pay me this money. So the master now wrote off the debt. The debt. The debt. And said, go. Forget about it. Don't pay it again. I release you from it. Jesus said in the following verse, he said, that same servant, there is another co-servant that was owing him. He now went to meet that his co-servant and ask for the money that one was owing him. So that one is now begging him. Say, please, I will pay you, but I don't have the money yet. You know, I don't have the means to pay, but I, I will still pay. The Bible says he got so angry with that other servant that he started dealing with that one. He said, when the master now heard of it, he now called him. He said, you, you owe me a greater amount. I forgave you. He said, why can't you do the same to your fellow servant? 
He said for punishing him and for dealing with him bitterly like this. The Bible said that Jesus said his master now demanded that he himself should be handed over to the tormentor for what he was owing before. And Jesus was talking about him and us believers, Christians. Because all of us are owing Jesus. You know, we owe him our lives. He died for us. We owe him our lives. So because he forgave us all our debts, everything we have done wrong, all our sins, all our failures, our shortcomings, our mistakes, he expects you and I to live that way to each other. Forgive. Let go. Be kind. I'm telling you. I remember there's a boy, uh, 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 a stepbrother of mine, introduced to me. Started coming to our church, you know, and then we discovered that um, uh, he had he had lost his both parents, you know. So when I heard about it and uh, he was coming to the church regularly, I asked him where he, where he was staying. Uh, I think it was, um, actually, he didn't have accommodation and nobody to help him. And he wasn't going to school and all that, you know. So I discussed with my wife. My wife and I and I agreed, you know, that, look, we, we need to invest in this young boy. You know, let's help him. So we brought him to the house, uh, gave him a room in the house. You know, to become one, to become our son, you know. We didn't really do adoption. We just, you know, brought him in and then wanted him to, you know. Uh, but we tried to find out whether he had parents, he had cousins, uncle or something. We discovered that there was nobody, you know, uh, nobody for him at all. You know, after our investigation, you know, after a while. So, you know, we, we decided to let him stay with us, you know. So he was living with us, you know, about... About, uh, about a year later, we all went to church for service, you know, uh, one, one, one evening. You know, everybody in the, in the community now knew him as, uh, as our son. So they used to call him uh, uh, ABJ's son, you know. So they, everybody knew him as our son, you know, because that's how we introduced him, you know, as our son. You know. uh, so I was in church ministering, preaching. He came back home. That's about a year later. He came back home. I don't know what devil got into him. He came back home and cleared my house. I mean, <laughs> he took most of my things. I'm telling you. Not the furniture. No, those, are, those were too heavy things to carry. You know. He took my wristwatch, my shoes, my clothes my, you know, money, uh, valuables, you know, things that I, that, you know, that were valuable to me that were in my, because he could come into my room, my bedroom, you know, so, you know, I mean, we took him as our, as our son, you know, he took all of that and then left a note for me, P placed the note on my bed, at the center of the bed, you know, and wrote there, he said, pa, you know, that's dad, he just wrote, he said, dad, Please don't be angry. Say, so I've decided to take these things, you know, to go and start life somewhere. You know, he said, I know you are a man of God and I know that you will forgive me. But please, I beg you, forgive me. I am so sorry. He said, I trust that the Lord Jesus Christ will pay you back. You know, when I saw that note, I began crying. I was weeping. I remember I, <laughs> I was I wept. I wept. I wasn't weeping because of the things he took. I don't know. I've never been attached, too attached to material things. I've never I've never been like that. Jesus said if a man come and say he wants to take your coat, you know, he wants to take your coat. He said, give him. Give him, let him go. I've never been attached to material things. You know, like some people say, somebody put a gun on your head. He say, your life or your money. He say, please, uh, I, can't, I can't give my money. That's a fool. The Bible says, what will, what will you profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? You know, give him the money. You know. 
You know, so I wept. I wasn't weeping because of the things he took. You know, he took all the cash I had in the house. I, I you know, and I put money in the house because we were going, we were doing something, uh, we were doing a project. My wife and I were doing a project, so we needed all this money. We couldn't, you know, if we go, went to the bank, we would not be able to use it when we want to use it in the morning. So we kept it in the house as at that period. He took everything, and he knew about it anyway, you know. I was weeping because of the love that I have for him. I loved him. I loved him. And I wanted him to go to school, go to university, become somebody, you know. Because I know that he will eventually become my pride. He will eventually become my pride. And, you know, in my good old age, with my son and my daughter, you know, I could, you know, I could have them around me as my children. And they would take care of me and my wife. You know? That was why I was crying. I was weeping. You know? So I took the note. I said, Lord, please forgive this young boy. Forgive him wherever he is. Bless him. Help him in the name of Jesus. You see, that's what Jesus wants. He wants you to be his heart. Jesus wants you to be his heart. Become the heart of Jesus. You know, the church where you are, the church where you are, become Jesus' encouragement to your pastor. Some of you, instead of encouraging your pastor, that man labors day and night. He's praying for you. When you make mistake, he's there to help you to, to be restored. He's there to pray and believe God for you to go to school, to go to work, to get business, to get your job. He comes and pray and prophesy and teach the scripture so that you, get, you grow in the things of the spirit. You mature. You know, every time your pastor is always investing spiritually in you. And now, for whatever the reason, your pastor has made mistake. Your pastor, you know, he, he, uh, maybe he said something he shouldn't have said on the pulpit. You are angry. You are offended. You have left the church. You have forgotten the times where he used to give you money for transport. You have forgotten the time that he was acting as Jesus on your behalf in the area of prayer, in the area of fast uh, 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 transport, transport back and forth, in the area of feeding your family, in the area of uh, helping you with prayer to get job, to get things, to, you know, for things to be better for you. You have forgotten all of that. Why can't you allow the same Jesus in you to minister back to your pastor, to minister back to your man of God? When will you do that? Especially uh, 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 our sisters that are married to pastors, men of God. You know, because the, the man is your husband. You are the one that knows his weakness. You are the one that knows his flaws, his mistakes. You, you know, you rubbish him at home. You, you try to frustrate him. You have forgotten that this man is called of God. And you are going to give account to Jesus for it. He's another man's servant. Don't pull him down. Don't join the devil. Don't, don't let the devil employ any part of your body as an instrument to bring discouragement to the servant of God. Hey, I'm telling you on that day, it, it will not be funny at all. We need to understand these things and apply ourselves accordingly. You know, I, I tell most of my sons in ministry. I have a lot of sons all over, you know, uh, ministers, pastors, who are pastoring their own independent churches. They're not pastoring my brand church or, you know, they are, they are GOs of their own churches. But by the grace of God, the Lord has made me a father to them. And I'm so grateful. These are good men, beautiful men, you know. God bless their heart. They are all over the world. God bless all of them, you know. Um, I used to tell them, don't submit to me based on my character because when you submit to me after a while you will discover my flaws uh, you, say, ah, you mean you have flaws you don't you have you know i'm not one of those men of god that pretends and come and try and uh, show this false perfection no i don't do that i have my flaws I have my weaknesses. It is the grace of Jesus that is abounding towards me in the area of my weaknesses that is helping me. Are you getting it? There is no man that is flawless. That's why there is no uh, 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 sinless perfection in this physical body. It's not possible. 
It, it's not possible. The Bible said in James chapter 3 verse 2, it said in many, in different ways, we make mistakes. You know, so if the Bible can bear witness to that, it will be a lie, falsehood, for anybody to think or to say that it doesn't make mistakes. It doesn't have mistakes. You know, so how can you now, instead of submitting to the grace that Jesus has brought you to, you now see that I said something or I did something, you know, that is not right or that is not uh, completely, you know, uh, what is supposed to, uh, uh, supposed to be. Now you are offended. You now turn your back against me. Now, before I made that mistake, have you ever thought of all the time I keep praying for you? I keep speaking prophetically over you. Every time I keep standing for you. I told them, I come to your church to preach, encourage your congregation to love you, and to encourage the church to move forward. Now that you are supposed to be there for me, that I've displayed my weakness, you now get angry, you get offended. That is evil. That is hypocritical. That is not of God. And that is the wrong thing that is going on in the body of Christ. And it's because people are not taught. People are not taught. You know? People are, Paul said, you should encourage one another. That is what Paul said. If I know you as a pastor and that you are struggling in the area of prayer, I will invite you for us to pray together. Because when we start praying together, you know, even if you are dozing up, I will keep praying. Because I, by the grace of God, I have grace to pray. I will keep praying. Because I know that once you see me praying, you know, after a while, out of courtesy for me, you will want to pray. But without you knowing, I would have encouraged you. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Be Jesus to everybody. Become the eyes, the ears, the mouth, you know, the hand, the feet of Jesus to your world. Be it for Jesus. Do it for him. You know? So don't forget. He said, for what what is a man's profited? Or for what is a man profited? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. He said, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You know what Jesus is saying here is that the whole world put together is not big enough. It's not big a prize enough to be given in exchange for one soul. One person's soul. Just one soul. You know, if you take the whole diamonds in the wall, combined with the whole gold in the wall, combined with the whole crude oil in the wall, let's say all the diamonds in planet Earth, one man takes it. Plus all the gold in this world, one man takes it. Plus all the crude oil in the whole world, one man takes it. You know, those three things, those three precious things, Jesus said, it is not up to the price for one person's soul. The soul of a man is very precious. You know why? When God made Adam, the Bible said he breathed, uh, God breathed, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul. You see, there is a part of God in a man's soul. Animals don't have it. There is a part of God in a man's soul. That's why even an unbeliever that is not born again, that the spirit is dead, trapped in darkness, the, the man can still invent something, can still come up with an idea, science, technology. Because there's something about the soul of a man that has an element of God in it. So there's no, you can't give anything in exchange for, 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 for the soul of a man. Don't, don't go after this world that, you know, a lot of people live as if they will never die. You know, they will never exit the world. They want to acquire everything for themselves. They want to steal everything they can steal. They want to own everything they can own for themselves. Forgetting that every one of us will check out one day. Oh, I want to urge you to be a blessing. Be a blessing. You know, I've said it several times, and I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. Let Jesus use you to, to encourage me financially 
to get on TV with these teachings of Jesus Christ. Don't live for yourself. You know, some people think that the reason they have a job or they have good business going is for them to be able to buy gold to put on, for them to be able to buy fine dress, fine suit, you know, to put on, for them to be able to travel around the world. There's nothing wrong with all of that. God wants you to do it. The Lord Jesus wants you to buy good gold, good things for yourself, good dress, good suit, you know, look good. Travel all over the world. Take vacation. Go to any island with your family. Jesus wants you to do that. He wants it for you. Because that's what Paul said. He gives us all good things, all good things to enjoy. So anybody that says to you that God doesn't want that for you is a lie. You know, I will never say that with my mouth because that's not scriptural. It's not consistent with the scripture. God wants you to live a good life. He wants you to, he wants you to, but the good life you want to live should not be at the expense of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't, it should never be at the expense of the gospel because you will eventually go back to that same Jesus. So I'm begging you right now in the name of Jesus. This is January, a new year. I want to ask you, I want to challenge you every month of this new year, for the next one year, make it a challenge. Send me a particular amount. Let's save it. Send it to me. Every month. Support me financially. I need money. Look, I want to tell you people this. I want to get on AIT television. Because AIT has a long reach in Nigeria here and to the rest of the world. You know, from Africa here in Nigeria. I want to be on AIT television station. And it costs a lot of money to be, to be on it. I want to be able to preach and teach Jesus to this my generation. I want to do it. Look, there are people that are Muslims supporting uh, 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 these imams to be on, on that station. I want you believers, Christians, to do the same for me. Every month, if it's $500, send to me. $1,000, do. $100, send. If it's 20000 every month throughout this year, send to me. If it's 10000 naira, if it's 100000 naira, do it. Let spreading the gospel be a priority to you. Because that is the, the heartbeat of Jesus. That is Jesus' heartbeat. The, whatever job you have, whatever business you have, you know, that whatever you are doing and you are getting income from it, it is God that is allowing that to take place for your good so that you may have from where to take money to finance the gospel. Please do it. I ask you in the name of Jesus. The Lord is appealing to you through me in Jesus' name. Most of these funny, funny prophets giving all kinds of prophecies. Do you know how they, they are able to get on TV to give these prophecies? It is people who are sponsoring them. It is people who are financing them. You know, And there's some of us who come to preach the truth. The gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, some of us don't want to finance it. Please, let's, let's do the right thing for Jesus. And I trust the Lord Jesus that you are persuaded of God that this year you will be a part of it in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. And I love you and I thank God for you. I trust the Lord Jesus Christ that this year you will be a part of this challenge. I want to challenge at least a hundred people to be a part of this thing. This year, I want to have a hundred people on my list. If you want to be a part of it, you know, a part of this challenge for this year to send me money every month. I, I'm not mising words. I'm telling you, you can call me whatever name you want to call me. Call me stupid. Call me idiot. You know, abuse me. It's okay. It's okay. Jesus said, if they, if they do that to me for his name's sake, is he, is he happy? Is he, I should be happy. Because there's a reward for me for it, you know. I'm never going to ask anybody to give me money to eat food, you know. Never. Jesus is faithful in that area. But to get on TV, I will keep asking until it happens. In Jesus' name. So I need 100 people to do that. Don't wait for the next person. Don't say, well, uh, Apostle is talking, AVJ is talking to somebody else. No, no, I'm talking to you. You are part of it, you know. So take my WhatsApp number, plus 234 803 
if you want to be part of it alone. Please, don't take this WhatsApp number and start sending me uh, messages of, eh, well, what are you doing? I, I, blah, blah. I don't want to know. Please, 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 don't do that. You know, don't do that. Otherwise, you will be coming against the Holy Ghost. You know, don't do that. In Jesus' name. I, I say that in the name of Jesus. Don't do that. You know, but I need 100 people. If you want to be part of these 100 people, please send me your name. You know, on my WhatsApp. And then send me the amount you want to be given every month. You know, when you do that, it becomes a goal. You know, it becomes a target for you to, you know, to keep every month. And then we'll be praying with you that financially the Lord will empower you to be able to do it throughout this year. You'll be amazed. The Lord will even increase your capacity. You know, you will, you, you will even increase the amount you'll be given. You know, so please, uh, everybody, wherever you are, I need 100 people. Hundred, I've prayed and I trust God. I know he has answered me. The Lord Jesus, Father, I ask you for hundred people in the name of Jesus. Thank you for giving me hundred partners in Jesus' name. And I know I'm going to get more than hundred, but I'm asking for hundred right now. You know, send me WhatsApp number. I mean, WhatsApp message. Send me a message on WhatsApp to tell me, ABJ, Apostle James, I want to be part of the hundred and I'm going to be giving XYZ amount every month. Please do that in the name of Jesus. And the Lord bless your giving. Multiply your seeds so in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The number again, my WhatsApp number is plus 234-803-07-18006. Please send me WhatsApp number and I trust the Lord Jesus Christ for you in Jesus' name. My Father, thank you for my audience. Thank you for the truth that we have heard. Thank you. You know, for moving on our hearts to live our lives for the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Father. I bless you in Jesus' precious name. And if you want to give, you know, an offering right now, maybe you want to give us your, you want to give us your tithe, your offering, you know, whatever it is, in the name of Jesus, you can use Zenith Bank. You know, you can do Zenith Bank right now in Jesus' name. Zenith Bank. The account number is one zero zero one four eight eight one six seven. Zenith Bank. 1001488167. Thank you for giving. Thank you. The Lord bless your giving and multiply your seeds soon in Jesus' precious name. All right. Thank you for uh, being a part of this teaching today in Jesus' name. This is AVJ, Apostle Victor James, and I am signing out. God bless you. Bye bye.